people who play or collect trading card games are pretty familiar with the regular cards that are released to the public. You can look those cards up on your favorite online vendor, like TCG Player, or maybe on the company website. Those cards are widely distributed, and uh, a lot of people know about them. So what about the rarer items? The items that maybe weren't intentionally released to the public, but they're out there anyway. We're going to talk about those today. All right, so there's a lot of confusion about uh, some of these items, and uh, we're going to go over some of them. We're going to go over playtest cards, test prints, misprints, and production items. Now this isn't going to be super in-depth, this is more of an overview, just so you can kind of tell the difference between these items. Okay, so playtest cards first. Let's get started. All right, here on the right, we have some playtest cards. Now I have these arranged in chronological order. You probably wouldn't find them so nicely organized if you were to find any out in the wild. But let me just flip through the pages here real quick so you can get an idea of what playtest cards look like. These playtest cards are from Magic the Gathering. So these are little pieces of paper or cardstock in different colors. And they're for various sets. So the early ones are this little shape. And then later we get into these bigger ones, which are full card sized. And then after that, we get into these ones with stickers on them. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what Magic playtest cards look like. Something you might notice is that they don't generally have the final version of the artwork. Usually that doesn't even exist yet. The card names aren't the final version of the card names, and often the casting costs or card abilities have changed during the playtesting process. Playtest cards are all about testing how the game is played play test. So things do change during that process. Playtesting happened externally in the early days, and that's why we tend to have earlier playtest cards and not newer playtest cards. Later on in the process, when playtesting happened internally to Wizards of the Coast, not as many playtest cards escaped. So newer playtest cards are actually more rare than the old ones. But uh, make no mistake, the old ones are also really rare. It's pretty difficult to find playtest cards. Around 2008, Wizards of the Coast made a policy against releasing playtest cards to the public. So after that date, we really don't see any at all. We have a few photos, but no physical copies. At least not in the collector community. They're still in the hands of the R&D department at Wizards of the Coast. R&D stands for Research and Development, and that's the Department of Wizards of the Coast where they do the playtesting at. Pokemon works differently. Pokemon is playtested at the Pokemon Card Lab, which is the name for the R&D department at Creatures, Inc. Wizards of the Coast did not playtest any Pokemon cards because they weren't creating the game. Wizards of the Coast was translating and distributing a Japanese game which had already been made. So you're not going to find any Wizards of the Coast Pokemon playtest cards. Where do playtest cards come from? They come from playtesters. So if you are lucky enough to track down a playtester, maybe they still have some cards. A lot of these were thrown away. If you can't track down a playtester, then uh, reach out to the misprint community and you'll probably be put in touch with someone like me or Keith Adams and uh, maybe we'll have something you're looking for and maybe we won't. Playtest cards are not test prints. That's a totally different thing. So these are playtest cards. Test prints are different. These are test prints. Except that. That doesn't belong here. That goes. That's on a different page. So these other things you see here, these are test prints. A test print, the purpose of that is that it is a print made by the print facility and submitted to the company 
for approval. It's made at high quality because the print facility wants to look good to the company they're giving the test print to. Test prints aren't made for every set. They're actually pretty rare, and that's because they're expensive to make. A lot of the cost in a print run has to do with the setup and cleanup costs. And that doesn't change regardless of the size of the print run. You still have to go through all those steps. It becomes affordable when the print run is large, but test prints don't need a large print run, which makes them pretty expensive on a per card basis. Test prints are needed because the real world has physics that don't exist in the digital world. So what I mean by that is that when you physically print something, the actual thing you receive doesn't always look exactly like the image on the screen before you printed it. That's because of things like surface porosity, ink viscosity, and ink bleed. Those things can affect the color saturation, and in the end, it might not look like what you had on the computer screen. So before you go and print millions or hundreds of millions of cards, you want to make sure they look right. Now once you know what you're doing, you don't have to make a test print every time you do a set. But when you change something about the card frame or something along those lines, then you might want to check it out before you go ahead and make a big print run. So these two right here, this had to do with updating the card frame. Now it wasn't a huge change, but it was a change and they wanted to check it out before they proceeded with a regular print run. These cards here and these here are foil test prints. So this is the other reason why you might want to run a test print is when you're testing out a new process that you haven't used before. In this case, they were developing foil cards, which is something that they hadn't really done. And the surface porosity of a foil card is different from a cardstock card because the foil is kind of a plastic layer and it doesn't really absorb the ink. It also bleeds out differently when the ink spreads due to gravity and viscosity. It changes your color saturation. So the print files for a foil sheet wouldn't be the same as the print files for a non-foil sheet. Ink saturation is very important because if you have too much saturation, then you can't see the foil through the ink. There's also some extra steps that go into making foil cards when you want certain areas of the card to not be foil. Test prints are also very rare. Since they're not made for every set, they're probably more rare than play test cards. But the issue is how many escape the company and get into the collector market. And that may be closer to the same amount. It's hard to say which one is, has more and which one has less. They're both pretty rare. But test prints test the printing and play test cards test the playing. They're two totally different things. So where do test prints come from? Well, usually test prints come from Wizards of the Coast employees, or rather, ex-Wizards of the Coast employees. You see, Wizards of the Coast employees have to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to work there. They can't share company information like that with the public. A lot of times they won't even talk to you. However, once they leave the company, that changes a little bit. At that point, they're a little more free to talk and share information and maybe sell things that they've saved from their time while they were working there. Once a test print has served its purpose, it's no longer needed by the company. Typically, they store it in the production file, give some to the R&D department to play with, or company employees just keep them as souvenirs. Test prints and playtest cards are both historically significant to the game that they're for but for different reasons. Next, we're going to talk about misprints. Now, test prints are not misprints. Test prints are intentionally created. Playtest cards are also intentionally created. They both serve a purpose. Misprints, however, are something that's made by accident. Misprint is an umbrella term that's used for anything that doesn't turn out the way the company intended. There's a lot of different subcategories of misprint, and I'm not going to get into all of them here in this video. This is just a general overview. 
but uh, more or less, misprints have two different kind of categories that they can go in. There's a misprint that is a design error, that's the fault of Wizards of the Coast, and there's a misprint that's a printing error, which is something that happens wrong at the print facility. These two that I'm showing you right now are design errors. So this is a mistake that was made at Wizards of the Coast. The print files looked like this when they were supplied to the print facility, and the print facility simply printed them. Here's a couple misprints that were caused by the print facility. So the one on the right is missing all of the ink except for black, and the one on the left has this area that was affected by liquid which prevented the other colors of ink from sticking. Here we have a double printed card. This one is a miscut. Now this error wasn't in the printing process, it was in the cutting process, but we still call it a misprint as an umbrella term. So when that sheet was being cut, it wasn't cut where it was supposed to be cut. And this one is a crimp. You can see it at the bottom there. This card was actually severed by the crimping machine when it cut the booster packs apart. So this happens not during the cutting process, but during the packaging process. There's some examples of misprints for you. Misprints are something that happen accidentally. Next we're going to go over some production items, which are a regular part of the printing process, but aren't typically released to the public. So these items are rare because they're not supposed to get out to the public, but they're also a regular part of the process. And so a lot of them are created even though we don't see them. These items right here, these five cards, these are called filler cards. So these occupy blank spaces in the sheet if the number of cards in the set isn't the same number of cards as it takes to fill up a full sheet. They have to print full sheets. So unused spaces contain cards that are supposed to be thrown away. Those cards are called filler cards. Even though millions of these might have been made, the vast majority were thrown away as intended. And so it's very rare for them to get out into the public. Another type of production item is an uncut sheet. You've probably seen these around. Sometimes they're given away as prizes at events. Here's a black and white sheet that's actually made up out of four different quadrants. And this was used for proofreading inside the company. So this isn't an uncut sheet like a printed sheet. This is for proofreading before that file gets sent to the print facility. Now this isn't made on an offset printing press. This was made inside the company offices. So it's also not on cardstock. It's on uh, kind of a thin paper. Here's a printout from the card layout process inside the company. This picture shows some color separations. Now cards are printed on a four color printing press so the digital card image has to be separated into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you want to get really technical, sometimes there's additional color layers, like white or an extra black strike, or maybe a spot color like gold. Anyway, each color has to have a color separation film, and that film is used to make the printing plates, which are then used to print the cards. So this picture shows some color separations. You can see the black one on the right, and the other ones are stacked together on the left side. Because test prints are so expensive, for regular sets they often use a cheaper method of color proofing. This one is Tektronix dye sublimation. They've also used Imation Match Print and Fuji Proof, which are different brands or technologies of color proofing. Another production item that's a regular part of the print process is the Make Ready process. That's this page right here on the left. The make ready process is when the offset printing press runs at slow speed at the beginning of the print run. Every print run has this. It's used to calibrate the machines and make sure everything's working properly. One of the reasons that's necessary is because each color is printed on a different printing plate. 
the registration of these plates gets adjusted so that the images line up with each other, otherwise you get a blurry picture. The make readies from early in the process are pretty crazy looking, but they get more and more normal looking as the adjustments get made. It takes a little while to do this and that uses a lot of cardstock sheets. In order to save money and supplies, they reuse some of the old make ready sheets. So that's why these are double printed. And it's also why they have a different card on the back upside down. The facility was just reusing sheets in order to save money because they knew that the make readies get thrown away anyway. Once the pressmen think all the adjustments are made and everything looks great, then they give the most recent sheets off the press to the boss. This is called the press check. So the boss looks over the sheets that are supposed to be good and makes sure that they're actually good. They need his approval before they can push the press into full speed production. So a press check should be a perfectly normal looking sheet of cards. Whereas a make ready could be anywhere from crazy looking to normal. A lot of make readies are made for every print run. Sometimes the better looking ones are put into the regular production run and sold with the regular cards, but the crazy looking ones are all supposed to be thrown away. Unlike most of the previously mentioned production items, make readies typically come from print facility workers rather than from Wizards of the Coast employees. A make ready is not a test print. A test print is made in high quality and presented to the company for approval. If the print facility gave one of these to the company and said, hey, look what we can do, the company wouldn't be very impressed. A make ready isn't exactly a misprint either because it wasn't made accidentally. This is an intentional part of the process. It's just part of setting up the press. All right, so hopefully now you understand a little bit about the different types of rarities or oddities that you might find that aren't regular production cards. And hopefully this gives you some idea of what you're looking at or how to tell them apart from one another. Hope you learned something. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.